with the short week, uh, how is what's the challenge in trying to get Ryan available, well, and does he need to practice at all to be available? I don't know if that necessarily is the case. That um, you know he's got a great grasp of what we're trying to do. Uh, the short week, we're trying to not make it as short. You know, with what we're trying to do today, as far as working and just trying to come in and um, you know get back, get back and get going. Uh, physically, it'll be somewhat of a short week just because you know, the turnaround and what we feel like we can do uh, today. And then, you know, we'll continue to add um, as we move through the week. But uh, we'll still, I think, have the same amount of time in the preparation and meetings. We'll get going here in a little bit, uh, allow these guys to get some rest and, and then get some treatment. How's the injury list overall going to look? Well, I mean, we'll see kind of what guys can do on a walkthrough basis and try to add some, uh, you know, individual. And again, now, That'll probably look a little bit better later in the week, um, just being here not even 48 hours from the time of the game. So, you know, we'll have to make sure that everybody prepares as a starter and that uh, and they're ready to go on the game plan. It's kind of the challenge, like, you know, for an athlete, like you see Ryan Tannehill come back into the game after after he gets hurt, but kind of what, what happens after? Well, I think there's a lot of, you know, I think that that's probably a, a, a really interesting question, you know, where you see guys, uh, Kind of come back and, and finish, and you know there's adrenaline and there's a lot of things um, that go into trying to get back out there uh, and, and allowing a player to finish. Um, and then I think that there's a lot of trauma that that happens, whether you you know talking about a, a shoulder or a hand or a wrist or there's even things that guys may leave the game and then the next day or they're like wake up and they're like holy. You know what I mean? Like that, I didn't really feel that and didn't know. So uh, we've had cases of that um, that have happened. So, I mean, I think that there's, you know, for those three hours, you know, the, every athlete, especially football players, put their bodies through, through um, a lot. And, um, you know, sometimes those injuries um, come to light, you know, maybe a day or two after. Um, but especially the ones that have something happen and then kind of go back in. And, you know, we do monitor. I, I, I'm very confident that we monitor, you know, the ability not to make, um, you know, an injury worse or put the player at jeopardy. Um, hopeful that they can, you know, protect themselves. I'm very aware of that when we make those decisions. Um, and then we kind of go from there. As you've gone through the last four weeks, what are some of the common threads that you're seeing you know, show up on game day that, that's keeping you guys from, from winning? Uh, well, we went, you know, two games without uh, creating a turnover on defense. You know, we didn't turn the ball over on offense. We, you know, again, Philly just, you know, wasn't good enough in all phases. Um, yeah, the turnovers against Jacksonville, uh, critical. And then, you know, the offensive penalties last week and then defensively the – you know, situational football um, at the end of the game, uh, allowing them to run it in, <clears throat> you know, in the red zone uh, last week, you know, were probably things that contributed um, to that game in general. So, I mean, I don't think there's one specific thing, you know, whether we you know, weren't able to run the ball against, you know, Cincinnati or Philly um, to kind of get things going. Jacksonville felt like we moved the ball well, like, you know, we, we don't really, you know, we, we have to focus on this week and, and how we pull it all together, you know, and try to combine all the good stuff, you know, that we've done and, uh, and you know, find a way to, to prepare and find a way to win. What's the, balance be, what's the balance between game planning for the Texans and preparing for potential impact of the weather? Well, I mean, I think it could be windy. It'll be cold. I mean, I think – the impact of the kicking game. I think that, you know, we would have had to prepare to return kicks against the Texans anyways. They're a very good special teams unit, very good kickoff. I think they're, you know, first or second in, in kickoffs inside uh, the 20 yard line. You know, so even in the dome, they're, they're you know, Fairbairn's kicking them up there. They're covering them extremely well. Um, so we would have had to kick, return, you know, kickoffs and be really good in that phase from a special teams standpoint. Um, you know, maybe just ball security, you know, understanding that, you know, how critical it is here late, late in the year when, when you're dealing with, 
with weather. And if it snows, it snows. If it rains or freezes, you know, they'll be, you know, the same for everybody. I know it could be the coldest game ever here, but you guys have played colder games before, so it really shouldn't make that big of a difference, should it? Well, I hope it, you know, never makes a difference. I mean, we've played in the rain, we've played in the snow, and, you know, you kind of go through a lot of these things, and we'll, we'll get some work inside today, and then we'll you know, work our way outside as, as the week goes along, and then everybody will have to just be prepared in, in their own way, um, whether that's the, the footing or the, the shoes that we wear or, you know, all the other things that go along with, with playing in, in weather games. You try not to ask players to do more than they're capable of. When you're as depleted as you are, does that become more difficult? Well, I think the challenge that we've always talked about is do you try to do more, right, and try to come up with some magic scheme, or do you try to do less and try to focus on execution? And I think there's a balance somewhere in between, you know, some plays that, you know, maybe we thought or some defensive scheme maybe that we thought that, hey, let's do that, and then, you know, it didn't, didn't go very well or we didn't execute it. Um, you know, I think that there's always a, a really great ability to execute your scheme, you know, I mean, what you've practiced and the bread and butter and, you know, mixing in a couple tweaks in the red zone and maybe on third down defensively, I think, trying to have a core of what we do so that these parts that you know, these players that, you know, whether it's John Reed last week, for example, or Jack Gibbons that maybe haven't been out there as much or, you know, when Monty, Monty Rice was working his way back in and different, you know, Andrew Adams, and now the volumes for some of these guys have is picked up because they kind of know it. So I think early on you probably are better off doing less than you are, you know, a whole lot. How did Gibbons do on Sunday, and are you hopeful maybe you get Dak back in the mix? As well? well, he'll do some stuff, and again, he'll have to do some stuff creatively. Um, you know, these, these IR rules, you know, something that, you know, hopefully that we can talk about just for the, the um, you know, in the off season for, you know, helping the player, you know, get some confidence to, you know, return to play. And you can't put pads on a, on a guy that's, you know, on IR. You have to, you know, take him off. And, and Zach is in a return to play. And so, you know, we're at a point in the season now where you know, pads isn't really an option. So just trying to be able to see where he is with his arm and how he can use it and, Make sure that he can protect himself and and do some things. So we'll we'll see kind of where he's at. I don't know if today will tell us much, but you know, hopefully, as we you know, just to get some guys ready, you know, whether that's Zach or you know anybody else. How is the trailer coming along? Uh, you know, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, how, how is he doing and, and progressing through the whole process? Well, good. I mean, it's just yeah. I think for the player, I don't want to speak for them. It's just. Um, they have to remain patient. They have to do everything that, you know, is in the protocol and, and be honest with the doctors and the trainers um, and the independent, you know, doctors and, and, and with the impact testing and everything that goes along. So, you know, hopefully um, we'll get them out there today and get Trey out there today and then you know, they can continue to work themselves um, you know, through that process as, as it goes along instance where guys can clear concussion protocol but still a decision is kept to, made to maybe keep them out just uh, I you know I don't know if we've you know necessarily had that happen I think you're referring probably to the Denver um, I just can't you know since I've been here um, I don't think they've ever said somebody was cleared and we didn't feel like you know they could play that just isn't something that happened I'm sure it obviously did, but we just haven't had that, you know, situation come up. The Texans have lost Pierce. It looks like they're, they're bouncing quarterbacks around. Some. How have they done it? How have they been so competitive the last two Good, weeks? Because, you know, I mean, they've, they have some really good v veteran players that have played, you know, other places that are now, you know, Malik Collins has been there. they got some good youth. Um, but they have, you know, Jerry Hughes is a player that I've always had respect for, uh, plays hard. Um, you know, they've been able to, to work lately with these tight ends. You know, it seems like they're really looking at them uh, in the red zone. have had success. The O-line's played well. It's protected the quarterback. Um, 
and and they've used the you know kind of you know the quarterback system to kind of force you to play a couple different looks and be prepared for a lot of things. Um, and that's something that we'll have to be prepared for as you know the game starts and it works its way through. Like you know, whether they're going on, on the ball or they're unbalanced or there's two quarterbacks are in the game. Derek's had four straight games of 200 rushing yards. Now with them, how has that just kind of been the the mo and worked so well every time? Um, you know, I've just been able to try to get him into his, you know, the second level. You know, it's a it's a penetrating uh, front, and you know, it puts a lot of stress on you from from that regard. They 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 move, you know, move and they and they attack and pressure, and you know, it'll be another huge challenge this week to um, to try to limit that that penetration or disruption that they like to create. having the same number of guys in the box or, or different run blitzes that you've seen consistently from team to team. When you've had the success like that against a team before and now you play in the second time, do you have to sort of guess what they might do differently or try and anticipate the adjustments? Well, I think we're always trying to do that. And I think sometimes whether that occurs during the game and you have to come over and, and be prepared for a um, to change things, to, to make sure that, hey, you know, we're going to block it differently. We're going to maybe look at this play as opposed to something else. Um, and I think you just have to make sure that you're using your rules and, and making sure that uh, everybody's communicating, you know, the front that, that it is or the, the pressure, you know, the indicator, whatever it may be. Um, but there'll be things that they've, you know, shown or, you know, not shown that we'll have to be ready for. Last week, returning to practice, I know he kind of joked with us. I'm full speed all the time. Clearly, you can't do that when you're returning, kind of pacing yourself. But do you feel like he can do anything this week to be ready Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think he did exactly what you would want to do in the return to play: go out there, um, practice, do, do some stuff on the show team, um, ramp up the individual, find out where there's setbacks, find out how you feel, find out how you respond, and then. Um, you know, transition. You know, we didn't feel like he was at a level uh, to to come back to the get. You know, ready for the game. You know, so maybe this week we can kind of see where that goes and hopefully try to get him back. How big of a challenge is it for Weave at this point in his young career, going after the quarterback and keeping containment at the same time? Um. You know, I think that's the, the decisions that you have to. Um, you know, and trust in the players that they're making great decisions of trying to affect the quarterback, but also understanding, you know, what the quarterback's ability is, his ability to to break contain or, you know, not. You know, so it's they're all kind of left with decisions, split second decisions, coming underneath the defender, running a route, uh, making a cut, you know, blocking, you know, giving them a, sho a shove instead of pulling on his jersey or tugging on him. All these decisions that we try to uh, coach and teach uh, happen in a split second. So that would be another example of that. Uh, kind of knowing you know, when you can go in there, when you can't, when it's coordinated. Um, that, that's always a challenge for, for pass rushers. I've had a couple of guys to the practice squad on the offensive line. I, mean, I guess here on Tuesday, safe to say, a lot of uncertainty maybe on what your line looks like on. Yeah, I mean, there'll be some moving parts. So we'll see where it's at here later in the week. But, you know, Daniel and Bo were guys that we have targeted. Daniel's been here. Bo can, you know, pull it and again play guard. So, you know, they get in here this morning and we'll, we'll see how they do. As you see how Ryan's progressing throughout the week, um, how much of a help, I guess, is it for Malik's game prep that it's a defense he's seen before as a starter? I think that that's fair. I think that that, uh, not only that, just you know the comfort level of having been out there. I think we talked about it after the game. He, he popped out there, um, you know, gave you know found Conley twice. You know, was decisive, pulled the ball, uh, tucked it, made a move, got a first down, slid. Uh, so I think all those things, you know, can help, and you know, it won't be any easier. But I think that those are um, all things that just as he continues to develop and uh, get more comfortable. I've kind of seen Malik handle the uncertainty when he doesn't know if he's going to be the guy. Well, we try to ask him all to prepare as a starter, and I know that that probably um, isn't always the case in the National Football League when there's a, when there's a starting quarterback that's in place. But 
you know, I think he really has done that. I've seen a lot of maturity, growth, seeing the way that, you know, again, his reps are coming, you know, that show team and you know, trying to get him to, you know, act like a starting quarterback and lead that unit and, and communicate the, how our language for the, the, the call that's on the card, um, the operation, the, the snap count, the, the cadence, um, whether we go on the ball the next play, try, all that look that we try to give him. I've seen a lot of uh, maturity and, and, and growth in that regard. I know you talk a lot about uh, Chig and his special teams ability, but just as an offensive playmaker, emerging as one of your top guys, you know, what do you make? Like, what what are your thoughts on how he's done that? I think he's taken advantage of his opportunities, and you know he's been strong with the football. He's made some contested catches. He's had some catch and runs. Um, you know, needs to continue to. You know, to help us when when we run the football, you know, like like a lot of guys. But you know, say he's you know, pushing through and continue to improve. The role of like moving him to some of the fullback looks was that something you guys originally thought of, or did that kind of come about as the year went on? Um, I, you know, I think we always, you know, his contact courage and his willingness to 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 go whether it's across the line of scrimmage or or from the backfield, we felt like was there. Um, and then that's you know kind of where we you know you moved him off the ball and then kind of slid him back inside and you know, just trying to put him in different places where we feel like can help us. I thought it was interesting had Landry and, and Lawan on the trip. Was that just to kind of keep them involved and around the team? Or no, they just were visiting their doctor. Um, <laughs> free ride. <laughs> doctor to the stars. Seen anything like that before? Had you ever done anything like that before, or did it all just happen? Um, I heard a play like that happen before in Oklahoma State, the same as that play happened. But I always imagined doing a play like that when I was young. And at that moment, I knew that was my chance to do it. And I feel like Kalu was in the right spot for that to happen. I think at the end, maybe the Redskins game, there was a, maybe, a, I forget who was even involved in that, but it was on the back line where it looked like maybe somebody could have done it. Did that ever uh, come up? Did y'all talk about that? Are you talking about Christian? No, they play with Christian. Yeah. Um, we told him like at the end we watched film and everything like he could have did it, but he could have caught the interception too. Like I feel like he was in position to catch the interception. But in my situation, I went in the exact position to catch the interception, so I just gave it to Kalu. He said he's keeping the ball, but gives you credit for it. Is he way cut it in half, or what is he set? Uh, nah, he can he can keep the ball. He can keep. You know that's his first. I didn't know that was his first um career. I mean NFL um pick. So I feel like that's great. He can keep the ball. I got I got another ball. Kansas City. I still like look at that ball every day. But um, that was just, uh, I feel like, that was just me being unselfish, and I feel like it was great for both of us in that moment. So I'm happy for him that that was his first pick. Were you concerned at all, Roger, that, that there might be the chance of a, you know, a receiver coming down with the ball? Or were it's you pretty certain? You said, well, what you said? Were, were you concerned at all that, mm -hmm. OK. Oh, no, I wasn't concerned on um, because when the ball was coming, he wasn't looking. Um, he was still, like, going down the field. So I knew there was my, like, is that chance to get a perfect catch without him distracting me or anything. And that's when Clue came. So I felt like it was great at the moment. Did the receiver say anything to you afterwards? Oh, no, he didn't say nothing to me. He didn't have time. I started running and setting brain with the teammate and everything. So he couldn't for real. You're, you're through that kind of rookie wall. You're past the college season at this mm -hmm. point, and, and you just turned in one of your best games. Mm -hmm. How have you gotten over that hump? Um, I would say the Ricker Wall, that's no joke right there. I did not know that was a thing for real until like that game. That's when I say it finally hit me. But um I say um it's great, you know, that game there I feel like my confidence came um a little more higher because playing against a guy like Mike Williams and everything, I just feel like that game I just gotta learn from my mistakes because I feel like there was some plays I could have did better. But it just on to the next game, just try to get better. What, what is the feeling like when you are struggling, when you know your college season would have been over with? I mean, is it more of a fatigue factor? Your legs feeling it? Where, where you feel it the most when you were, when you're kind of trying to get past it? I say both, physically and mentally. On um, just being tired. Um, you know, mentally, you feel like I could be chilling right now. You know, college, they chilling right now and all that stuff. You know, I'm still playing lead, and just my body. You know, it gets sore playing against like guys, big guys, physical every play throughout the whole game. So I feel like it's both mentally and physically. Get some tough plays down around the, the goal line. I think that might be like Cincinnati and, and of course the Jacksonville one too. Mm -hmm. What do you think you learn from those and, and you know how did that help you maybe maybe against the Chargers and, and going forward? Oh, yeah, I'll say them was the tough plays. I don't you know them plays I could have made. Um I can't go back from that. I just gotta learn from my mistakes and I just gotta get better. I just gotta put that in the past and just try to get better in the future. Anything in particular 
particular from from those plays that that you know that you did learn specifically from? Or? Um, I wouldn't say it's just from them plays. It's just I. They, they they just needed I mean they just wanted it more in that way. I could have caught the interception the Jaguars. I couldn't make it. They wanted more. I felt like Cincinnati, you know, T Higgins caught the ball on me. I feel like he just wanted it more to me. Um, I just gotta play more stronger and I just gotta like know who I'm going against in that phase, I feel like. But don't play is just in the past. I feel like I just gotta go on and just keep pushing for my team. Roger, when you looked around on Sunday the various packages you guys put out on the field in the secondary. It looked a lot different than it did at the beginning of the season. As one of the guys who's been relatively healthy and out there most weeks, do you take a pressure in that, that you got to keep it up and kind of carry this unit right now? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I'm going into that game there. I knew that was going to throw the ball a lot. And, you know, getting another season on, we didn't start off good. And, you know, some guys are getting hurt and everything. So I feel like it's, it's a little tougher at the back end. But, you know, we got new guys coming in and out. So I feel like we just got to, like, it all start with practice. We just gotta work hard and just communicate and just try to get better every week throughout the practice and everything. And I feel like that builds up. You know, we have guys like Jeff and Gay. I mean, David. He was here, but now he's hurt. Now we just have leaders like that, which is helping push us every practice. Just try to get better throughout the whole season. But I feel like we still gotta keep going, keep pushing. My bad. Most of the guys in that locker room never lost four games before. What's, what's what the that? Most never. of the guys in that locker room have never lost four games in a row before. Mm. What's what's the mood like now compared um, to the beginning of the season? I never knew that. I didn't never knew um they lost four. They never lost four games. But just seeing how KB was after the game, you can tell that um I can tell they really like hurt him like how much he really wanted. And that's just like one thing about me that just really hurt me because you know seeing older guys like that who like who build a brand on his team and all that stuff. I feel like. I just got to be stronger on my end to just try to help them out, even though we have guys banged up and everything. So I feel like with my job, I feel I just got to do better for guys like him. How have you seen some of those leaders like keep that energy positive? And, and you, you know, as a, as a newcomer, like how have you been able to, to keep that positive as well? Um, just first, it start off with them just keeping it positive, keeping that energy, keep going positive, just trying to get better throughout the whole week. It started with them because there'll be some plays I'll be, I'll be bad, I'll be down. I'll be like, damn, I'm messing up for the team. But like guys like him and the leaders, they always keep that positive energy. Be like, this is one play, that's just that. Just keep pushing. We still got more room to play. It's just stuff like that, that positive energy. And everybody's like that throughout the locker room. So I feel like as long as you keep that positive mindset and energy, I feel like we're going to be great at the end. Coach Mitchell, I mentioned, you know, that you take some of the things that have happened, like, very personally for you. Like, what's, what's the key to kind of learning from it, but also turning the page and, and rolling forward to a, a, another good play? Uh, I feel like with me, that's one of the hardest things with me because I'm always hard on myself. Even if it's a missed tackle and that got to a first down, I'm going to be hard on, the, on myself throughout the whole game with that. But it's just with me, I say me personally, I just got to, like, move on to the next page and just try to, like, try to, like, do good throughout the whole game will be better throughout the whole game because we still got Maroon to play in that game, so I just can't think about that. But with me, personally, me, I feel like that's something I got to work on, not trying to be so hard on myself, but just turn the next page. Texas playing two quarterbacks right now. Does that make it any more challenging to prepare for? Um, I, I wouldn't say so. I feel like, um, I mean, I don't know exactly the two quarterbacks I'm referring to, but I feel like that won't mean nothing or none of that because they got a great running back. You know, they still got great receivers and everything. But it's just like trying to learn and figure out who they're going to use the quarterback in different situations. And I feel like going into today, we just got to learn and how we're going to fit that. Roger, you don't like to play in cold weather. You've kind of made that clear. You've, yeah. you've done it, though, this season, you know, oh, yeah. up in Green Bay. It's going to be pretty cold on Saturday. Like I heard. Single digits. How do you prepare for something <laughs> like that mentally, being like a guy who doesn't love that? Yeah, I heard it's going to be really cold. But Green Bay, that was really the first big test right there because i never seen snow that much, really. But, like, it was snowing, so I feel like that was a good test for me. But this game right here, like, they said it's going to be real cold. But really, I say it's all mental. It's all in the head. So I feel like I'm going to be good at the end. But yeah, it, it's going to be cold. I, I, I can already tell. What are the extra things they get ready for a game like this? Like, yeah. what particularly do you use? First, a heater. I got to be close to a heater. Them heaters on the sideline, that'd be working out good for me, I would say. But, like, it was, it's all mentally, I would say. Um, it's not It's not like a big challenge for me. I feel like I could pay through it. Like gloves, sweat, extra sweats, extra. Uh, Long underwear, maybe. I mean, really, all I need is some some Vaseline, some ice to hide on my arms and everything. My legs don't get cold, really. It's just like really my arms. So once that good, I'm straight. I'm good for the game. You ever get used to that? That 
gasoline? I mean, just like greasing up before you go out there? It just seems kind of weird. Yeah. You got to. You got to use it. You got to <laughs> use that IV. I mean, I'll step out there at first. I'll be like, oh, no, I got to go back inside. But, like, that really helped. I'm not going to lie. It's really helped. You're afraid of ball, maybe. May a ball may slip through your grasp if you got on too much Vaseline. I got the gloves for that. I got the gloves. <laughs> you put the gloves on, you good. So I feel like I'm going to be scary. I feel like I got a little routine for this cold weather. What, you, what have you seen, Roger, from your, your fellow rookie uh, uh, Malik uh, this season? You know, in, in practice, whether it's you know, running the scout team or whatever, what, what kind of progress have you seen him make? I'm um, going back to the positive energy. That's one of the guys I would say always have a positive energy. You know, um, you know, we go on the field. He, he try to be there for the team, uh, even though he make like some mistakes. He have a positive energy. He just try to get better every day. I promise you, like he the one who picked me up because we've been like knowing each other since Auburn days. So I feel like. He is going to be good for him at the end because he pushed every day. He worked hard every day, and I feel like he's a great team leader. So many big days against this team. I know you've got a bullseye on you every week, but I feel like you got 53 bullseyes on you this Saturday. Um, I really thought that far. Um, I mean, I'm just preparing and trying to do the best I can to you know get everybody better and come out here and what do I need to do to get ready for Sunday. Roger, I mean, what's it been like kind of getting to know him as a rookie, you know, even though he's an Auburn guy? And what have you, what's maybe impressed you the most about him? Oh, uh, he's just all about his work. Uh, comes in and works hard, learns every day. He's grown as a player and um, plays hard and do, do whatever he can to help us win. You conscious of the forecast? The cold, cold game's usually pretty good for running back. It's supposed to be really bad. Uh, Weather conditions can be the weather conditions. You, know, you still gotta go out there and play. Hot, cold. I mean, just football. Throughout the last four weeks, have you seen like the energy and practice and and you know transferring the game? Like, have you seen that consistent? And then is it the same? You know, as you guys came into the building this week to prepare for this game? Um, our energy is always gonna be the same. We gotta come to work. We gotta get better. And I think that's been the main focus. Um, and I think the guys have been positive and. Want to do whatever they can to, you know, get us better and you know help us, you know, guard there and get a win. And um, I think the guys have the same positive attitude this week. First four games, yeah, you guys have, have been on since you've been here. Uh, has that changed the mood in there? Has it changed the mood since I just said everybody has positive energy and nobody's going to be negative? I mean, that doesn't help anything. I mean, guys are just got to come back, go, go to work, and get better. Try to go out and get a win. Ability to, to run, you know, how does that help your game at all uh, in terms of the option plays and things like that? I mean, just give us another asset. He can run with the ball. He's um, good in open field, and you know he makes plays with his legs. So um, just another asset for offense. Derek, you faced a lot of loaded boxes and run pressures, obviously, over the last few years. Do you think that they can do anything really different, or that you haven't seen, or is this just a game where? It becomes kind of mono a mono again. You just got to be better than them up front. Yeah, I don't really think about all that. I just think that <clears throat> us doing our job, executing, do what we need to do to put plays together to score points and eventually, you know, win the game. I think that's, that 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 mean that needs to be the main focus. But you know, it starts with us in these meeting rooms and going out to practice and you know, putting it all together and letting it you know happen in the game on on Saturday. Short week force you to do anything differently in terms of your recovery, or you're you pretty confident Saturday you're you'll be fine either way. No, I'll be good. Derek Ryan has dealt with uh, you know ankle issues for both ankles. Now he gets hurt again, comes back out. Uh, what can you say about the way he's fought to make sure he's on the field as much as possible this year? Um, you know, you can do whatever you can to you know help this team win and. Leader of this team, and you know, it shows the heart that he has to come out and you know play through you know the pain and you know just finish the game like he did. What did David ask you about the short week? What is the challenge when you do have a short week and you come out for West Coast trip and you know Tuesday should be a day off for you? Instead, you're on the practice field. How, what do you have to do, I guess, mentally, physically, as a team, to to get ready to play? Um, I guess prepare. I mean. We played on Thursday, we just uh, play on Saturday, one day closer. So I don't think nothing's changed as far as 
what we do or how we prepare. I just think you just got to be locked in and focus. In terms of staying positive, how much does it help that you guys still have a lot to play for? And as a guy who knows how difficult it is to, to get to the playoffs and win there, do you have to remind the young guys at all that you do have a real opportunity that doesn't come around every year? Um, I think you just take it one week at a time. Um, don't get too overwhelmed putting scenarios and things like that in your head. Um, continue to focus on improving and doing that by the way you work and, you know, being the leader of this team. And I think guys, you know, see that from the, from the leaders on this team and, you know, how we want to play and what we need to do to win the game. Some of the guys have said, like, as that gap between you and Jacksonville has closed, the sense of urgency has increased for you. Uh, would that be the case? Like, has your sense of urgency increased? Um, I said that on Sunday at the game that we needed urgency, and um, I think that's, you know, pretty obvious for everybody in the locker room what we need to do and, you know, how we got to come out this week. Social media can be a pretty unmerciful place. Do you talk to the offensive line, Dennis, about, I mean, cause they, they're under fire all the time. Tell them to tune that out or... About know, social media? Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, the fans have been pretty tough on them. I don't, I'm not really caught up in social media. I don't, I mean, it's not really something that I'm looking at or put into what I got going on, so I, I don't really know. I don't pay attention to it. From a pass pro protective, uh, excuse me, perspective, do you feel like you've made, you know, improvement to where you can be more involved in that third down package, you know, from a, a pass protection standpoint? I'm just taking <clears throat> taking advantage of my opportunities when I get them and trying to do whatever I can to be available, uh, you know, in the passing game and get the most out of plays whenever I get opportunity.